Good evening. Bless you. Hello to everybody everywhere. I'm the Elder Ty Johnson, and thank you so much for joining us. This is what we call the bottom line. I know it's a tie. Where is Denise? Ty, where? I know you all want to see those pretty faces, but guess what? They're off tonight doing what they do. Every now and then people get sick. Every now and then things come up, but uh, they allowing me. Oh, Lord, is Julius Cephas watching this thing? I've got special permission to set the condition for the bottom line tonight. That's right. And uh, we want to say hello and uh, get better to State uh, Representative Charles Potter, who is trying to heal from a little cold. That stuff is going around. I hope that fly didn't bite him, you all. Did that fly? You think that fly? No, no. That fly, we don't need none of that, boy. Stay away from him. You see a fly, get him. Get him, black flag. But we got a real, real good show tonight. Um, one, a special guest is in the studio. He's here. He's here right now. I call him Dr. Dick. He's Dr. Holla Dick. Good God Almighty. From the Brandywine School District. He's here to put it down and to talk about the referendum and some real other things. So uh, important issues. So get by your phones if you want to call in. And you might call in Docs. He's loaded. He's ready for you. But most of all, he's going to need your support. By way of news, and I believe Ed is going to be in later on to talk about the sports. While I was out of town, thank you all for your prayers. Have you all ever been on a plane and the plane just starts acting crazy? And I was beside one of my brothers. He went to speaking in tongues. It can I'm my And the lady looked back to and said, what in God? I said, he'll be all right. He, he wants the plane to settle out. Plane settled out, and she said, will you teach me that? I said, honey, you got to get that Holy Ghost. You got to get that ghost. Yes, you got to get that Holy Ghost. But as long as we're on this plane, the plane will not go down. Don't forget, uh, September the 13th, vote for yours truly, Wilmington City Council at large. Was I supposed to say that? That's right. I'm supposed to be saying that. I'm not good at promoting myself, so I got to do it. I'm asking God to allow me to serve just a little bit different. Amen. And you all know what we've been doing thus far. If you don't know, go to eldertie.com. Read about some of the things. I got some real fantastic folks working to help me to get that message out. The bottom line, it starts now. Janie Baker pleading guilty for injecting her husband's steroid medication, oh Lord, with antifreeze. Janie, have you not heard of divorce? Just walk, Jane. I don't know what's going on. Meanwhile, yesterday, 37-year-old lady was shot around 6th Street, and I know somebody's seen something. Step it up! Step it up, because you all know how I feel. When anyone gets shot in this city, we can win this city for God. So I want you to bring it on home. Step it up. It makes no sense at all. Bullets flying everywhere. Four Wilmington men will do some time. And I won't say that they're Thunder Guards. I won't say that. I'll say that they were selling heroin. I'll say that the due process happened. But here's what gets me. One of the brothers was giving or providing his father with heroin to make the per to, to, to kind of transport for him. And I'm telling you all, we got to cut this nonsense out. We got to cut it out. You cannot make me believe that God is who he says he is and that all these folks who he has made a way for that he will not take your gifts and make a way for you. The only way you know to make money is to sell dope. You're not going to make me believe that. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to say there is better and there is greater in you. Let's go for it. And then for you parents who laying around chilling, you're not even talking up because your child is selling dope. We, you smoking a little blunt at blunt. <laughs> yeah, I used to smoke a little blunt. I know about that. 25 years ago, but I grew, I, I grew up. I can't smoke that weed no more. You know, you can change. I'm telling you, you can change. But your child will not respect you. 
Your child will not listen to you if you are dealing in the same behavior that your child is dealing in. And one day your child is going to need you. Amen. Your child is going to need the wisdom of a father or mother, grandma, grandpa, uncle, or aunt. And they're not going to look to you for that wisdom, but they're going to say, how are you going to tell me something when you're doing the same thing I'm doing? Go on over there, sit down, and shut up. We've got to cut it out and put things in its proper perspective. Amen? Now, the Wilmington Economic, uh, Wilmington Educational Improvement Commission, right, and the House will vote on Wednesday. Doc is here. Doc's going to talk all about that. If you're not doing anything Wednesday, please, you all, please, come on. Come on. You, got, you know John P. Key, don't you? He had a song. We brought him to the park, and John touched him. Show up! That's what he used to holler. If you don't show up, people will not respond. You got to show up. So if you're not doing anything Wednesday, State Reps ask you all, as many parents as can, to come to Dover. This is the bottom line. That means we don't fear or favor. Am I doing all right? Huh? Give me a blink back there, the cameraman. I want the cameraman to give me a blink. Oh, he said, doing all right, doing all right. And mom told me that I was like Tommy, Doc. She said I was like Tommy on Martin. I really didn't have a job. Broke my heart. Now I got to run for counsel. Isn't that nothing? Incidentally, for those of you brothers and sisters who've just come out of prison, or you've been out of prison for a while, you want to get your life on the right track, ha-ha, woo! Congratulations to you. I love you. Here's a great big hug. Here's a real big kiss. I'm voting for I'm rooting for you. Doc's rooting for you. A whole lot of the community's believing in you. Here's an opportunity to get, a, uh, get in the pardon process. I'm not going to lie and say, you can get a pardon. I can't say that. You know, yours truly did participate in what was called a Fugitive Safe Surrender Program. It took us two years with the Marshal Dave Thomas, all, a lot of the judges, and let me tell you all, that was work. That was work. I had to get the church. I had to get the, ju the judges, and I was walking with the state troopers. And, you know, I threw little rocks or two at the penitentiary, and you don't know what it's like. Walk with all them troopers, boy, and they boots and hats all down. And you say, my God, I'm glad these boys are not running me down. I'm straight. But, but, at the end of the day, two days, we held the New Destiny Fellowship. Incidentally, uh, congratulations, New Destiny, going out, praying on the corners, Mondays. Uh, through Thursday, 6 in the morning. You can join them, 6 a.m. But Bishop Weeks, Apostle Weeks, all the crowd over New Destiny, come on over. Church is yours. Let's make it happen. 1,743 people turned themselves in. We have over 100,000 people in this state. We only have about eight to 900,000 people in the state, but we have 100,000 people with federal warrants. And these people came and turned themselves in and only three people went to jail. Woo! Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Three people. But first, they got rid of that fear, and they stepped up, and they turned themselves in. Now, the judges were working hard. The judges were working hard. We had DHS. We had this, uh, uh, all the state agencies. We had a lot of the community people in there. And we turned the church into a courtroom, and they handled 4,000 448 cases. Woo Can you say that's a lot of cases? But there were a lot of people happy. So I say that to say this coming Saturday, we have the pardon process going on. Introduction to the pardon process right at Hicks Anderson Community Center, run by Dwight Davis and the new uh, chief over there, Ugundi. He and Dwight are putting together along with some fantastic people. They're going to have uh, some of the folks running for lieutenant governor. They're going to have some folks running for governor to be there. Um, and I believe it starts at 12. Call Hicks Anderson Community Center so you can start to get your life back on track. You can start with your pardon. You can start by getting there Saturday. Look, Saturday, write it down, Hicks Anderson Community Center. But you know, Pastor D, woo, Pastor Derek Johnson, Pastor D, the little brother. He's the little brother. 
Tell him I said so. Tell him I said so. He's the little brother. He's doing something. I got to clean up what I messed up. Whew, sounds like a little song to me. I'm starting my life over again. Oh, Lord. Clean up what I messed up. He's got on the same day, it's called Clean Up What I Messed Up. It's a pardon project. It's a pardon clinic. The address is 504 South Claymont Street. 504 South Claymont Street. I'm going to say it again. 504 South Claymont Street. All right? It's at the Joshua Harvest Church. Clean up what I messed up. That one starts at 10 o'clock. And Brother Ed is here, and he's got some sports later on in the show. I'm flying this ship tonight. Compliments of the state rep who isn't here. So my agent told me I probably won't get no more money. You understand? But I get to do what I want I like to do. So I'm loving on you all as much as I can. Doc is here, and Doc is representing the Brandywine School District. He's like six levels above my pay grade. So get next to your phone. We're going to be interviewing him. He's a real nice guy. So you want to have some pertinent questions, and you want to put your ears on. Clean up what I messed up. I'm starting my life over again. Newspaper called me. I don't know how they quoted me, y'all. I hope they did me right on the Jeremy McDowell case. I understand that the uh, verdict is, uh, was back, the police are back. Incidentally, that case over at Howard, they called me on that. I said, stop calling me, there's other people you all could talk to. Uh, I just believe that we got much, much work to do on all fronts, amen? This is the bottom line. I'm El Detai and I'm coming right back. Y'all got, my, uh, um, um, they're not gonna play my song. See how they do me, see how they do me? Hey, hey, state rep. Get well, man, because, uh, you know, I'm going to get some people down there Wednesday. We're going to vote, and the referendum's coming up for the Brandywine School District. I want you all to get ready to vote. Doc is here. I'm going over to Ed. He's going to talk sports. And uh, I don't know, man. Ed, you still got that con. Ed, look, come on, man. Look, go over there. Go over to studio. <laughs> is that Studio A? All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, and uh, welcome to the sports segment of the show. I was just informed by one of our staff members that his nephew is the young man who uh, was shot and killed on my block a couple weeks ago, and that's just disheartening, as um, the guy's name was T-Dot, and um, it happened on my block, and it's very sad news um, for me, and I was, um, my heart goes out to him and his family, and hopefully, um, Hopefully, um, they'll catch the, the perpetrator who did this this thing. And these young people need to um, they need to know that um, you don't know whose lives that you you're touring around with when you um, shoot and kill somebody. Our heart goes out to our member here, and um, our condolences. Okay, I'm gonna start off with horse racing. Got a lot to cover tonight, so I'm gonna be uh, very candid. Um, there will be five new horses to challenge Nyquist in the Preakness next Saturday as Nyquist will try to become the second horse in two years or back-to-back -back years to win the Triple Crown. Everybody knows American Pharaoh won it last year, and um, the, we got the Preakness left and we got the Belmont Stakes in a few weeks, and good luck to Nyquist um, the rest of the way. A tennis at the Italian Open. Andy Murray finally got a win against Novak Djokovic as he defeated Djokovic in the Italian Open Finals uh, yesterday. It was Murray Murray's first win in five tries against Djokovic in on clay. On the women's side, uh, it was an All-American final as Serena Williams defeated young up-and-coming Madison Keys to win her 70th, 70th title. Serena bounced back after losing a couple of uh, finals. Um, a couple of um, months ago, and uh, she looks good. And the next major, they're heading into um, the French Open on clay, which starts, uh, I think it is, next week. Uh, good luck to Serena as she's trying to win uh, 22, uh, trying to win our 22nd um, major and uh, become the all-time leader in that category. And once again, uh, good luck, and we she will bounce back. Golf. Yesterday, Jason Day, 
set a 36 hole record of, oh, I'm sorry, he set a three round total uh, on Saturday, uh, 14 under par, and he won the Players' Championship, which is the richest tournament, golf tournament in the world. And uh, he won by four strokes. And uh, Tiger Woods is still nowhere to be found. I hope Ty Tiger finally gets himself together and uh, makes a strong comeback. Um, we need some tournaments for Tiger to win because um, he just done fell off the, the map completely. We haven't seen him. He didn't play in a Masters tournament. And um, Tiger, we need to see you, and we hope you bounce back because we still think you're a very good player. You just made some mistakes along the way. In, it, in the NHL, Eastern Conference Finals, best of seven. The Tampa Bay Lightning lead the Pittsburgh Penguins one game to none with game two set for tonight at 8 p.m., and it should be underway as we speak. The Western Conference Finals, the St. Louis Blues lead San Ho the San Jose Sharks uh, after winning a game one last night, two to one, to take a one game to none lead in that series final. Game two is set for that, that uh, conference um, Tuesday for Tuesday night, and the winners of each conference will face off, will meet in the Stanley Cup Finals, which is set to begin in a couple of weeks. In baseball, Chicago's of the Major League Baseball, the Chicago of the Chicago's of the Major League Baseball are still leading East Conference. They still wait looking for an all Chicago World Series as the Cubs of the NL have the best record in majors at 27 and 9. I remember just a couple years ago when the, when the Cubs were just playing awful and had the worst record in baseball. Now with, with a couple of pitchers, uh, Lester and Jake Arrieta, who used to be with the Baltimore Orioles, these two guys or something else, and they they have the best ERA in baseball, and these guys look pretty good, and a lot of people are picking them, um, the, the Chicago Cubs of the uh, National League to win the World Series this year. Uh, they, once again, they're 27 and nine, best record in baseball, and the Chicago White Sox of the AL are 24 and 14. They have the best record in the AL, and that's just barely. Baltimore is 23 and 13, and they're just hanging in. The Phillies are 22 and 16. That's the best record they've had in quite some time. We got a long way to go. Now, in the standings, the American League East, Baltimore is leading the Eastern Division. In the Central, Chicago's 24 and 14. In the West, Texas is leading at 22 and 16. In the National League, Washington is leading the East Division, 23 and 15. And the Phillies are second at 22 and 16. They're one game behind. They're doing very well. I, that was unexpected. I thought they was going to stink again this year, but however, they, they're winning. In the Central Division, Chicago, like I said, they have the best record in baseball, 27-9. And in the West, uh, Los Angeles is leading at 20-17. and 17. Okay, on to the NBA. Thursday night, Oklahoma City closed out the San Antonio Spurs four games to two with a resounding 113-99 victory. This game wasn't even as close as it seemed as one time, at one point, the Thunder led by uh, 30 points at one point in that game in the third quarter. Spurs look old and tired. And uh, this was surprising because the Spurs finished the season at 67 and 15, with the second best record in the NBA um, behind the Golden State Warriors. And many people picked them to at least make it to the conference finals after crushing the Miami, they crushed uh, the Thunder 124 to 92 in game one of that series. And the Spurs ended up losing the next four out of five games uh, to lose the series in six games. Um, I've been saying this all along that the nucleus, the nucleus of the Spurs team looked rather old at the end. Uh, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manny Ginobili, Manuel Ginobili, they, looked, they just looked like they, um, they were kind of tired, and they, you didn't see much of them uh, scoring and doing the things they did to win previous championships. Uh, Tim Duncan, five championships. Uh, Tony Parker, five championships. Manny Ginobili, uh, four championships. And Tim Duncan in two games, he had one game he had two points. Another game he had no points and no boards. That, you know, I don't know how you know you could be a superstar and drop off that fast, but he just looked terrible coming down the stretch. He did score like 21 points in, the, in that closeout game, but they just didn't look that good at all together as a nucleus. And with the players that they picked up um, from Portland and West from uh, Indiana Pacers, I thought they was going to do better than that. And uh, that's just uh, they just fade into the sunset. 
Uh, young, young, young boys are, are taking over the NBA just like any other sport. The young guys are taking over, and they're winning. Last night, Kyle Lowry scored 35 points, and DeMar, DeMar LaRozan scored 28 as the Toronto Raptors won game seven to send Dwayne Wade and the Miami Heat at home. The Heat at times look old, and uh, with the many uh, veteran players that they picked up this year, and they just could not stop Lowry. They also lost very badly on the boards. They lost like 52 to 32 on the boards. And when you can't pull down the boards, um, you're going to have a tough time with Benny beating any, any team. The same thing happened in the Oklahoma City. The guy named Adams, he dominated the boards down low. Uh, Tom Duncan and them couldn't deal with that guy. And that's why I think they lost the series. Uh, now we have the Cleveland Cavaliers led by LeBron James uh, against the Toronto uh, uh, Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals starting tomorrow night at Cleveland, 8 p.m. And the Western Conference Finals is set with Oklahoma City to face the Golden State Warriors starting tonight at 9 p.m. at Golden State. Now, this should be a high-flying affair as these two teams led the NBA in scoring. Golden State won all three meetings against the Thunder this year. I think Cleveland will defeat Toronto four games of one or two, and Golden State will defeat uh, Oklahoma City four games of two to set up a repeat of last year's finals uh, as, Cle as the Cleveland Cavaliers will ver versus the Golden State Warriors, with Golden State winning this series in seven games. And I've been saying this all along, um, all year. I was probably wrong about Miami because I thought Miami was going to play Cleveland and give them a run for the money, but they just faded down the stretch in last night's game, and Toronto is in their spot now. And I've been saying this all along that um, if, uh, if Golden State is healthy and they're playing their game, which they are the best team in NBA, they are the best team in NBA, they play the best team ball in NBA, no, game, no team will beat them in a seven-game series. In closing out, I want to say that Johnny Manziel was arrested um, this week, and he, um, he, uh, he uh, assaulted his girlfriend, and she, um, she, she was just, you know, she, he just, I don't know what's wrong with this guy, but he's got time after time chances, and he just uh, didn't do the right thing. And in, uh, in, uh, local, in local sports, Archmere Academy wins the state rugby title, Congratulations to them, and I want to close up by saying that a fake bomb, a fake bomb uh, w was seized at the United Games at, in the soccer that abandoned, it was abandoned on the final day of the season. In England, a fake bomb left behind during a security exercise led police to evacuate Manchester United's home stadium on Sunday. This was kind of crazy because, you know, with all the terrorism going on in the world, you know, that had to send a lot of, a lot of scare into a lot of different people. And we hope that this type of thing never happens again because people are just scared throughout the world about this terrorism. And we're going to go to a short break before we go back over to Ty and his guests. Take it, take it away. Hello, everybody everywhere. Thank you so much for joining us. This is That's Crazy, the part of the bottom line where we bring on our special guests. And I told you, I told you, I'm Elder Ty Johnson. Uh, on behalf of State Representative Charles Potter, Jr., who allowed me to come in and fly this ship tonight. Woo! And the ladies aren't here. I'm not going to start anything with the ladies, Doc, because they, you know. Uh-uh. It. Uh-uh. 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 They will be back next Monday. And you all call them, tell them, Sid Ty gave you good reviews, baby. Look, we got some very serious stuff coming up in the community. As a matter of fact, this is Dr. Holliday. He is here to talk. He is superintendent of the Brandywine School District, and he's here to talk a little bit about the referendum. And he has already told me, Ty, vote tomorrow. You're in our district. That's right. And I told you. I said, I'll be doing it. Doc, welcome. Thank On you. behalf of uh, State Representative Charles Potter, Jr., all of the uh, bottom line gang, we love you here in the city. We love what you're doing. Talk about, um, talk to me as if I don't know what a referendum is. Okay. So in, in public school uh, districts in Delaware, the only way in which you can raise your local taxes to meet your needs, Great. Uh, increasing costs, is to go out to your local uh, community and get approval to increase the tax rate. And for most districts, that happens somewhere between four and six years usually. Every four to six years, 
the Board of Education makes a recommendation mm -hmm. uh, to the community to, uh, to increase uh, local taxes. For, based on the needs? Based on the needs. Okay, and this is teacher-wise or this is buildings or what are, what are these needs? Yeah, so this is, this is actually a two-pronged referendum. So it's both operational and capital. Capital is for projects that are going to happen to any of your buildings that is in excess of $750,000. Okay. And then operational on the other side covers everything from books to supplies to materials to staffing to budgets. So they're two separate, but they're on one ballot. And that referendum in Brandywine is tomorrow. Polls open at 8 a.m., close at 10 p.m. Anyone That's 18? Tomorrow. That is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Correct. That's tomorrow, everybody. So the polls open up at 8? Pardon me, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Through, through 8 p.m. All right, so folks uh, who are going to work, they could try to get there at lunchtime. Correct. And if you can't get there at lunchtime, you're, and this is at your voting place. Your it, vote. You can vote. This is different than a uh, regular uh, election. You can actually vote. There are a number of sites. All of our schools, every school in the Brandywine School District, Which name will, some of them. will be open. So you have, let's start here in the city. Right. You have the uh, Harlan Elementary, P.S. DuPont Middle, Lombardi Elementary School. Right. That's off of Falk Road. Right. Then you move up to Brandywine High School. Right. You got Springer. Right. Concord. Um, I already mentioned Brandywine. You got Mount Pleasant High School, Tally Middle School, okay. Maple Lane Elementary, Claymont Elementary. Okay. Uh, May I said Maple Lane. You got Mount Pleasant Elementary okay. School. Okay. Any of our schools, you can vote, and then there are some other voting locations as well. So, do you, I, I show up at PS because I live close. That's so right. I bring my um, I ID. Did. I did. saw. And they. Eighteen years or older. You're eighteen. No, man. I did. <laughs> So I bring my license. Correct. Just a proper ID. And no matter if I'm in that school. So I don't have to go to my traditional polling place. I can just go to the school. That is correct. You Amen. can just go to the school. Amen. And 10 to 8. To 8 p.m. 10 to 8 p.m. If folks have to go to work, then you're going to try to have to get to one of these schools, maybe at lunchtime. Or please, please, please say, look. Mr. Boss, I got to get off early. This is important. What now? We talked about the money being used for capital, buildings. We don't want buildings falling down on our young people. We talked about the money being used what for books and for. When's the last time something like this has happened? 2012. The last referendum we held in the Brandywine School District was 2012. So we guaranteed our community that we would get at least three years out of our last referendum. We got four. We're making the same commitment Amen. this time. And we hope, we hope to get four. And if we get really lucky and can stretch those dollars, we'll get to five years. I mean, our, uh, our intent is to, to make that referendum and those dollars last as long as we possibly can. Uh, okay. the, the, keep in mind here, uh, uh, Ty, this, these dollars support not only programs and initiatives that occur in our schools during the school day, right. but Elder Ty, they also support after school programs, and middle that's a, school sports. That's, that's and, so <laughs> important because I, I was on here hollering about we never saw, we as a community never saw a race to the top money that trickled down into the community where we could do, uh, better get parents involved. I'd like to see more parents involved. I'd like to see us working, you know, with these bus stops and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see more after school programs because a lot of parents are working two and three jobs. Sure. And a lot of, when you look at the statistics, a lot of the homes are being ra um, ran by single parent uh, females. Sure. Single parent and female, mm -hmm. right? Correct. And a lot of times folks don't understand that these after school programs, they get mentors, they get l the love sometimes. And then if something's happened during the school, right, that the, the, the administrators may not know about, they get a chance to talk about it, then that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. All that goes on. Absolutely. And, and I'm just saying that because I work with some of those folks, and I know that. Talk a little bit about um, diversity. 
Yeah. Well, we are an incredibly diverse district. We are uh, the one district in Newcastle County that has really stuck with the original intent of the DSEG order, meaning we have uh, students who from the suburbs go to uh, both Harlan as well as PS, and we have students who live in the city who, right. who attend some of our schools in the suburbs. Right. So our schools are diverse. Equity is a major initiative in our district. It's all about students, all students having access equal uh, and fluid access to quality programs. Right. Um, and we got to ensure through this referendum that, that all kids have the kind of supports in school that help them be successful, whether it's interventionists, guidance counselors, uh, additional support staff to help them with reading and writing and mathematics. It's SAT prep programs at the high school level. It's music and arts programs both during and after school. I mean, we have an elementary basketball league that runs through the winter time that Brilliant. is as strong of a program at that level as our middle and high school programs. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely. Brilliant. Runs out of P.S. DuPont on Saturdays in, in the winter time. And what I love about that program Elder Ty is that when you walk into the gym, you see diversity, uh, families from different places in our community uh -huh. sitting side That's by it. side, uh, rubbing elbows, it's building important. relationships. It's critically important. So it's, it's a referendum that allows for us to continue operating at the high level we are and supporting those programs and building upon those programs that are already successful. So we got to get this done. We got to get the yes got to get this out. done. We got to get this done. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, everybody, we have to vote. This is not something we can 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 play around with. Brandywine School District needs us. Dr. Um, we call him Dr. Dick. He's our friend. <laughs> Dr. Holler Dick, our friend. He's here personally to say we definitely, definitely need you all who live within, within our districts to get over there to the school. And you don't have to go to your polling place, but go to your school between 10 and 8. If you can't make it at be between 10, right, and, and lunchtime or whatever, then certainly you can make it when you get off work. And if you're not working, you don't have any excuse. Please, 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 please. And they talk about we can't get folks involved. I don't believe that. We can get folks involved if we ask. Through love and kindness have I drawn thee, and our children are our greatest asset. Let's demonstrate to them right now that they are our greatest asset. Doc, look, um, I was in Civil Air Patrol, and uh, a lot of these young people, so what, what do you do with young people who are just not college material yeah so we have a uh, college and career ready program in all three of our our high schools right so we recognize not I mean our goal is not to, everybody's going to college right our, our goal is to ensure what are you that do with them yeah so we have programs within our school uh, all three of our high schools that uh, whether it's a stem program whether it's a uh, a program around AG whether it's a program uh, you know in the in the biosciences fields um, we have, we have a number of programs that are supported by our staff, including our counselors, that helps you know, get students ready for uh, the career that they're interested in. And, and sometimes that, that involves setting up internships, mentoring programs. Uh, some students want to go directly into the mil military. Regardless of what a student wants to do, it's our job to ensure that they have access to, the, to, like to those programs. Like That's that. the key. Now, what about the guy? male or female sit, sitting out there right now saying, I'm not giving them another dime because the, the, I understand that the dropout rate is 58% or 50-something percent. That's too high. Mm -hmm. And they're blaming you. And they're blaming the teachers. And they're saying, speak to that. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, our graduation rate in Brandywine is very high. And I think it has a lot to do with the programs that we run within so our schools. So set that record straight, Todd. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, uh, a very high graduation rate. Okay. And it has everything to do with the work that people are doing in the buildings. And it's not just administrators or counselors or the teachers, it's paraprofessionals. Heck, for that matter, it's custodians and food service folks who build relationships with kids and support them. So you got to put the, the student front and center, ensure they have the, the resources to
to be successful. And to answer your first question around this issue of, hey, I, I'm not going to give you another dime, what's the backbone of a strong community? Isn't it your public school system? I think it's the education. Backbone of the community. You keep a child safe. You get a child educated, right? And you give them an opportunity. Absolutely. And the prisons will not have to see that child. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. So tomorrow we're voting. We are voting. Tomorrow we are voting. Correct. Woohoo! Boys down South Holly. Yeah, yeah boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. We're voting tomorrow because and the money's going to be used for either structures, capital. Capital or operational. Or it's operation. a combination of both. Yep, it's a dual request. What am I missing? Well, I think we should talk about the project. So we got um, three uh, significant renovations, one at Claymont Elementary School, one at Brandywine High School. Um, we're going to do a, 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 a demo. How can I say stop the press? Stop the press. Are we going to bring down Burnett? Yeah, we're going to bring down. Lord have mercy. You know how long that building's been. People want that building the gone. The Tower of Learning is coming down. <laughs> it's coming it's down. It's coming down, Ty. Right. Uh, and then the final uh, okay. project is, is Carcroft Elementary. So we're going to bring really? we're going to bring Burnett down. Okay. Uh, that'll be open space. To And we have not determined what it will be yet, whether it'll be an open field, whether it'll be a baseball field possibly, additional space for kids to play soccer, football. Mm -hmm. We've already engaged the community that lives around uh, Burnett to get some thoughts from them. Really? The general thought is, That's good, what I heard them I say like is. That. You've engaged the young people. Correct. That's good. Bring it down, open space, let's utilize it. Because that's the footprint of P.S. DuPont, as you know. I mean, we, hey, need, man. we need space there. You it's a I'm big a miter. <laughs> you know I'm a dynamiter. Don't look, don't start nothing. It <laughs> won't be nothing. You know I'm a dynamiter. I want to see Bernard. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Doc. You born here? I, I was born and raised in uh, uh, Wilmington. Um, attended Concord High School, graduated from there. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, graduated from Concord. <laughs> Played played baseball in college. Came back, started teaching. You played uh, baseball? I did. Yeah. Were you any good? I think I was pretty good. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start like this thing with with schools and you just, you just yeah. had to. I mean, because that's a hard job. Early 90s, I, mean, I got into teaching, and I recognized after about uh, four years of teaching, I thought, well, you know, I have the skill set, the leadership skills, and such to. Uh, to be in a, a building level administrator, became an assistant principal for three years, uh, moved down to Del Mar Did you? Middle and Senior <laughs> High School, which is, uh, you know, I went from the most northern end of the state, Concord High School, to, to the most southern end of gotcha. the state. And it's a little Small different. Town. A little bit different, but yeah, you know what I found? Different. People are people. Good Absolutely. people are everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the beautiful thing about a, a small town like Del Mar is it's a true community school. And that's what we need to get back to up here in Newcastle County. We got to create environments well, you in say, schools. When you say true community school, give me some characteristics of a true community school. Well, first and foremost, it is the game in town. Meaning, you know, the folks who live in Del Mar, they don't send their their, their children anywhere but Del Mar. They're a great deal of pride in that school. So we got school pride. We got school pride. We, we got have school, parent involvement. We got, we got school and, ownership. Correct. The parents take ownership. Engagement at a very okay. high level. How do, how, do, how, how do we do that? How do we get that done in the city? It starts with a great leader of a school. You got to have a great leader. Right. You got to give that leader the autonomy to build his or her team, not just the administrative team, but hire a group of teachers, a, pro, a group of professionals that have a light vision. What about the community? Well, you get, you, you, you get the community involved by opening up your doors of right. the school and okay. welcoming them in. And do letting you, them know it's their building. How do you empower um, parents? Um, because um, Bishop Morton, whom I love to life, says that we have to get the authority back into the home. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the parents to engage to where they feel like, you know, I'm a part of your education. I'm taking on, look, if you go out here and you talk to some of these folks who went to Howard and, boy, they'll rumble you. You know what I mean? They will rumble you. You talk about the dynamiters, and you go to my website, young lady put on there that Ty led the uh, P.S. DuPont dynamiters uh, to the football championship. I said, no, 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 take that off, girl. 
because everybody knows I was in the band. <laughs> they, they're going to hurt me if they find out that I was placating football. <laughs> what I'm saying is that that whole esprit de corps, that whole thing where everybody knew, how do you kind of get back to that? I know I'm not trying to say, you know, yesterday's gone. Hmm. We live in today. But with the with social media and the advent of of of, of um, technology, how do we utilize that? Yeah, you know, look at some of the uh, uh, civic associations, man. You know how they get better police response? Mm -hmm. They're talking to each other. Yeah. How do we do that? In get school. To, yeah, get to school. Now, um, I know uh, some of the school maybe PS has a piece where you can. Um, type in and get your child's or grades and that sort of thing. Yeah, he's but good. Yeah, but how do you take that to the next level, like a Facebook thing, like yeah. a get the teacher to talk in or, or a, a, a FaceTime? You know, I, sure. my daughter, she don't even, she just FaceTimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. Or is that probable? Oh, I think it's very much probable, and in fact, I think it's happening. It might not be happening across the board, but, but you have plenty of teachers who are using social media and, right. and, and other apps to communicate with families. In fact, uh, you got some think, apps for that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, you just made me feel old school, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ways in which teachers can communicate in real time with families. Yeah. Uh, so that during the work day. Because uh, some know, of the homework now, man, you know, it's not like when I was. Come on, it's bro. a little more challenging, isn't come it? Come on, bro. Yeah. I yeah. mean, come on. So I, I just think it's a mindset that, and again, I think it begins with the leader. And at the end of the day, though, you, you know, regardless of technology and apps and all these other things, it boils down to relationships. You've got to have people who are ready and willing to build relationships with a diverse uh, population of families because our, you know, going back to what we were talking about 10 minutes ago, diversity is in our schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not all the same. But if we respect one another and we're willing to listen and accept the fact that your experience at PS might have been different than mine at Concord High School, mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, that's your building. You know, if you have a child who's attending uh, PS DuPont Middle School now, if, if I'm the principal or I'm your child's teacher, I'm going to make you feel welcome. I'm going to create opportunities for you to come into the building that you're excited about as a parent, not hesitant about. I like that's that. The, that's I like that. How much money are you looking for? So this is a, uh, a request of 28 cents mm -hmm. on every $100 of assessed home value. So sometimes people hear go, what, what does that mean, mm -hmm. 28 cents on 100 Remember, we haven't had an, a reassessment done in Newcastle County. I want to say close to 30 years now is what I believe it. Mm -hmm. So your assessed value of your home is significantly lower mm -hmm. than the actual value of your home. I see. So for the average taxpayer, mm -hmm. it's the cost of about two pizzas a month. You're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about okay. $20. I'm glad you broke so, that down. 14 man. to $20 a month. Yes, sir. If we're all about education, I think we can afford that. I think it's it's a, an investment today that'll pay off tomorrow. Now, if we're all about education and we're all about our children, love. We got to love our children, and we got to love the process called education. And if we if we do that and we profess that out of our mouths. We got to possess it in our hearts to where there's action tomorrow. We got to vote this thing. We got to make it happen. Yes, we got to make it happen. 28 cents is not a lot of money. No, it is not. No, it's not. And I'm not saying that because I'm a big baller. I am not a baller. I work for the Lord. You understand? Retirement is out of this world. Pain great. You see, like you, probably a thankless job. <laughs> yeah. I, it's. It's but a it's a it's, great job. It's a fulfilling job in I'll that you know you're that. making a significant difference in the lives of kids. Well, when you see, give me a story, young no. person, or, or you see, because we don't get to hear from the superintendent. Yeah. We think all the superintendent sees our administrators. Yeah. But you've seen. Oh. I, you have to have had. I'll, I'll capture it this way for you, Elder Ty. When I'm at the Bob Carpenter Center shaking all of the graduates' hands, Good God there, Almighty. there are kids that walk across the stage that have all kinds of strong academic accolades. They're going to Ivy League universities. They're going to be uh, lawyers and doctors and uh, professors. I mean, you can see they are, they yeah, are they on get, the trajectory of success, right? <laughs> but then there are kids that walk across that stage who you've worked with. Yes, sir. As a principal, as a superintendent, you've worked with the family. Because in ninth grade, the student might have had major 
uh, issues, issues with, with you know, whether it be drugs or violence or right, right, you know, right. dealing with crisis at home. And or, it's not always drugs and violence. No, it's some some lots kids of don't know things. how to mediate. I mean, yeah. some kids just get angry. Some some kids right. just you know for various reasons. I hear you. But but watching them walk across the stage and shake your hand and know that they're going into the military or they're going into the workforce into a, a field that they're interested in and they're going to be successful is every bit as fulfilling as shaking the kid's hand who's going off to an Ivy League college. There are success stories in our schools with all students of all backgrounds and populations and social. Somebody, someone stands. wants to read up on this right now. Is their website? There is. You just go to the Brandywine Schools District's website, www.brandywineschools.org. And there is a slow referendum that, Slow that down, brother. Do it again. www.brandywineschools.org. Www. Uh, www. All you got to do is Google uh -huh. Brandywine School District. It'll come It'll pull up. Pull up. Correct. If by chance you're just joining us, this is our friend on behalf of um, State Representative Charles Potter, Jr., who has uh, uh, beckoned um, or, or urged uh, our um, um, superintendent to come in tonight, the superintendent of the Brandywine School District, come in. Explain to us, and I think you did a wonderful job. Thanks, Elder Todd. Yes, Thank you sir. for having me. Man, Appreciate it. to come in and talk about what we must do tomorrow. This is nothing to play with. If you say you love young people, if you say that they need to be educated, and you know liberation is the only way, the only true way to liberation is education, then you got to do what Doc says. We got to get out there tomorrow between 10 and eight, and we got to make our vote count. And you're not going to the polls, you're going to the schools nearest you. On behalf of The Bottom Line, I'm the Elder Ty, and we thank you so much for allowing me to make it happen. For Deneen, Nicole, uh, Shaquem, State Representative Potter, my friend Ed, and everybody else who makes it happen, but we could not make it happen without you. Like love. And a great big hug until next Monday night. We meet. You be sweet. Take care of yourself, won't you? And stay safe. The Lord bless you and keep you.